Hello and welcome to another edition of Here's the Pitch, sponsored by Masses Restaurants in St. Louis. Five locations, stlmasses.com is their website. Again, go there for curbside delivery because you might not be able to get in if you're driving through St. Louis these days, if you're watching this uh, in mid-November when I'm taping this. Remember to subscribe to see all the new videos that come up. I try to do one uh, once a week, uh, Stern content, WWE content, St. Louis sports content, or any sort of sports content. But uh, right now doing a basically a Howard Stern series of interviews of uh, former guests that have been on the show and former people that used to work on the show. And this is an interview I did right before I just started doing the video component of this, but uh, it still holds today, so I want people to see it. I think people will enjoy it. It's Casey Armstrong. And Casey, of course, part of the show for a long time in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s and then kind of fell off the map. Well, what happened to him? I get all those answers right here. So let's welcome uh, Casey uh, onto the program here. Hello, Casey. Hey, man. What's going on? Thank you so much for, for having me, man. And uh, I'm actually I'm, uh, I'm taping you here at the studio so that's that's why you uh oh but uh i don't got you in here you know i'm not even I'm, we're doing audio so I'm, I'm fine but it's been a while since i've heard your voice um i think you were on the stern show up till around 2004 2005 um so maybe just update folks here who were uh, huge stern fans like like me what uh what have you been doing the last uh oh i don't know 15 years <laughs> that's so weird to say but holy cow yeah. it's been 15 years yeah, right. so um so let's see. So uh, Chiasano fired me, I guess, around 2005, like you said. And um, from there, I went to my first rehab. Uh, that was in Newport Beach, uh, California. And I got there, and I got, I got sober for uh, four months or something like that, and uh, ended up staying there, not in Newport Beach, but all over California for probably about seven or eight years. And then... Um, Went to a to um, to try and rekind uh, what's it called rekindle not rekindle um, when you try and get back with somebody after you break up what do they call yeah, that rekindle the relationship sure reconcile okay reconcile the re's yeah sure <laughs> so uh, yeah that didn't work out so after that going back to California you know I was I was gonna marry this girl and then. Didn't really work out that way, so I thought the best thing to do was to come back to New York, and uh, that's that's when a couple of years later I started WMAP, which is the world's most amazing people. It's a twenty-four hour internet-based station, and then from there, uh, after uh, two two or three years, we then got syndicated on FM radio. Then I put out a book, and now I'm talking to you, man, on uh, on the pitch. You look good. But you always look good. That was kind of the the bullshit thing about this was it was oh there's there's Artie who's a mess and stuttering John who's got hemorrhoids and there's KC. He's got hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> so this the thing you're doing now, I, from what I've been reading, is that you just kind of find people with great stories and you you interview them. Tell me a little bit about what that what's going on there. Yeah, Brad. So the whole thing about this station is like everybody's got a story, you know, and. If you're around negative people, you become negative. If you're around positive people, you become positive. And I guess that selfishly was why I started this thing. So anybody who comes on here, they uh, have a passion. They have something they believe in or, or a challenge and they get through it. Or sometimes they don't get through it or they try to get through it. Those are the people that I want to talk to. For instance, uh, in the book, Simply Amazing, that we're, we're talking about, uh, it starts off with a a chapter about a man named Werner Reich, who was a concentration camp uh, survivor at Auschwitz and Munthausen. To hear, dude, to hear what this guy went through, uh, incredible. I mean, I don't know how a human being could go through this and come out the other side and tell me that they love life. That's pretty cool, man. So uh, I want to get into the book and more of these stories, but I, I'm just curious. So the beginning of your career, how does one end up at the Howard Stern show? I think you, you started as an intern, right? So, I mean, and they don't just give those out. How did you get selected to be an intern and then go into being the associate producer? And then you become a key member of that, of that time period. Oh, thanks, man. It's, there's a lot to be said for uh, OCD can be a bad thing and, Addiction can be a horrible thing, but it can also be a good thing and lead to good things. 
my addiction, I wanted that job. I wanted to get my foot in there somehow. So it was my first senior year because I played football. So I had five years down there. It was my first senior year, and I was doing a Howard Ripoff show on the on the radio at, at the college. And uh, I, I didn't I didn't learn from my classes really. I, I learned mostly from watching his E show. You used to watch the old E show, right? I have fifty five DVDs of just twelve hours of yeah yeah absolutely yes. <laughs> And you saw how, like, you know, Fred would have the carts and, um, you know, Howard would be looking at him and then Robin would be in a different place. You know, that's that's kind of where I, I learned how to do my version of uh, of Howard. I ripped them off. I mean, I don't do that anymore. But so I, I did the show and I sent my tapes in every day, every day um, until Gary called me because he liked the singing psychic. I don't know if you remember who the singing psychic was. Oh Does yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are a big fan. All right. I'm sorry. I am, but yes, I am. No, that's great. That's, that's totally cool. I mean, I was too. I was the same way. I, yeah. I, you know, uh, people are miserable in, in traffic, you know? So if you turn that show on, you get to know each person and yeah, it was, it was so cool. So I, I got, um, invited for an interview to, to be an intern and, uh, once I got there, I ended up getting the, the internship. They say it was because of the, the photo that I sent because I had uh, my uh, my headshots with, and one of them was uh, topless, like the uh, with, with the German uh, gentleman. I don't know if you know that that reference. Well, you did a you did a photo shoot. I, I know everything. Trust me. <laughs> but you did a photo shoot with a, a gay German, and evidently they made a, <laughs> made a poster out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are, are most uh, most of the people that listen to your show are they uh, hardcore fans like you, or um, so it, reach out to a different? I will tell you what I what I've done. It, it, I called the thing. I used to call it Baseball and Beyond, and I changed the name of it because I actually did talk to uh, Stuttering John uh, last last year around this time. He came through town to, to promote, promote stand up. Um, okay. And then we had Jim Florentine on, and um, Great guy. yeah, and it, I've kind of run through. Um, so it's, it starts kind of as a baseball thing where Ozzie Smith, Joe Buck, Bob Costas. But I definitely wanted to, to talk to some of the comedians coming through town and just guys I was interested in. So Tom Green, uh, Chris Farley, Kevin Farley's brother uh, came on. So, yeah, um, I'm, I'm just basically saying, hey, here's people that I want to talk to. Uh, how do I do it? I'll figure out a way on this podcast. So, yeah, that, that's how I came really, across. Man. Yeah, I've, that's, and I, and that's I knew. totally cool. Yeah, thank you. Where now? What's what's the? Is it a, is there a comedy store in 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 um in, in uh Saint Saint uh Saint Louis? Saint Louis, we've got the Funny Bone, which has been here forever. Uh, Artie went there many times, had many interesting. I think he had a went to get some cheeseburgers around four o'clock or some some crazy story. You might remember uh, that. Sounds like my friend, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the Helium Comedy Club is a new one. You probably haven't been through here a while but that's the new no, one. No, I, I actually you know when you, you bring those up I that's one city that I never I don't think I've ever been to. I'd really like to. I Yeah, I, I that's uh, I've been gypped. Well, um, normally I try to I self-deprecate and I say there's no need to, but I need to stop doing that. There's a lot of good stuff here. Cardinals are fun. It's fun in the summer. I don't know about the winter, but I heard it was an awesome city. Um yeah, I've seen like and I've never been outside the country. Uh, so I, 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 you know, kind of pride myself. I'm like, hey, man, I've been to South Dakota. I've been to North Dakota. I've been to uh, Idaho, you know. But I've never, that's probably one place I've never been to is, is your city. And I, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like I should put that on a bucket list. Well, if you What's have a comedy club, maybe, uh, let's talk afterwards. Maybe I can get a gig down yeah, there. Yeah, Funny Bone or uh, Helium. There, and I have some names. So I'll try, maybe I'll hook you up. I'll figure out a way to get you in here. That'd be fun. Awesome. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh, so, so you brought up Artie the other day. I, I mean, the, the other day. But I saw him uh, two weekends ago or three weekends ago. First time I saw him in a long time. Now, you love Artie, right? Yes. Yeah. And the guy is uh, such an amazing person. And. I know that he has. Everybody knows that he has his demons, and it's it's a it's a tough road for him. But if I could tell you honestly, the guy is one of the most caring and thoughtful, unselfish people you'll ever meet in your life. He just doesn't understand it himself. Which, as much as you try and tell him, he doesn't care. 
which well, kind of I think he's a great guy. Yeah, and I've met him uh, a couple times. He came through town, and and I met his uh, his manager at the time was Tim. I actually even had his 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 st- uh, sister's number, Stacy, for Stacey. a little bit. Yeah, and we we kept in touch for a little bit. Um, this is awesome. And I just feel like Artie, it just it's sad because I I guess he's just completely taken over by this this the, the demons of these drugs and and he was just such a key member of the show too. I got sad when he left, but then I I kind of just didn't want to follow the rest because I just thought it was going to end badly. I can't yeah. be, I, I hate to say it, and I'm sure he's heard this a million times from other people. I can't believe he's still alive like that that. Um, so it's good. Sounds good that you've talked to him. I, I don't know how how much do you keep in touch with him, but uh, how much do you keep in touch with him? And, and what is his, well, what's he up to now? Right over the years, I've 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 tried to. I mean, when I was in California, those were some of the darkest times that I've ever gone through. You thought they were dark when I was on the show, but that afterwards it got really bad. And he was always there for me. I mean, he's talked me off the ledge a million times, and I just tried to try and be there for him, but. It's very hard. Uh, he changes his number quite often, and uh, you know we, we won't speak for a while. But uh, because he knows how much I care about him, and he knows how we both been through the mill, so yeah, you guys. It, it was it was very emotional. Well, and I and I wanted to go back to your the days on the show. It it seemed like you two were. You didn't know, I guess, at the point. I guess he didn't really reveal that he was doing all of his all of his heroin. I guess until '06, and maybe it just kind of started back up then, but. Um, boy, he was having some rough times. Um, but you were having rough times too, I guess, at that time. Uh, but how hard was it for you to be a target? I mean, H- Howard targeted you. He would target anyone that he saw a weakness in. Tell me. <laughs> I mean, and everyone laughed and it was funny, but it, it, in the end, it's almost like, man, he, he's, it was fun. It was, and he always would say, it's good radio. So that's why I do it. I mean, what was it like to be a target? Or coming into work every day, knowing you never know. He's just, I might get called, be called a retard today, or you know, I might have to take a test yeah. that I can't pass. Fred, I, I that stuff to me, it was, you know, it was it was nothing. I, I mean, it didn't bother me at all. Uh, the the gay stuff I thought was funnier than anybody else thought was funny. The dumb stuff. Look, I'm not a genius. Uh, we, we all know that, and that, that's that's what I write in the book. The first sentence is. Casey Armstrong wrote a book that guy can't even read. How can he write a book? And, it, you know, in a way, it's, 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 it's kind of true. I mean, I got 710 on my SAT. I'm not the brightest, but I got the job by having a good work ethic and uh, never took myself too seriously. So that's the whole thing. I thought I had thick skin, but that stuff never bothered me, if, if, that's, if that's what you're talking about. I, I didn't care if, if, if Howard called me gay or called me dumb or whatever. That stuff never, never bothered me. What was bothering me is you know, the, mental, the mental illness, the depression, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the chemical stuff, the stuff that's, uh, that, that's wrong. Yeah, but even it's then... It was, a, was a, a walk in the park. But I was going to say, even then, and I know he was trying to help, but it, it always did become a bit. And I remember Dominic was trying to help you. I mean, when you have... Because you did have this moment, and it, I'm telling you, it's a great moment. I hate saying it, where you literally kind of flip out on Howard, and you'd never see anybody flip <laughs> out on Howard. But, um, you know, they have to bring Ronnie in, and you, they're like, yeah, Ronnie's going to really stop you. That, that was a funny... It was just a great show. You can watch it on YouTube, but I mean... When you're, you know, when you know that you've got some sort of sickness, and and yeah, they're trying to help you. Probably behind the scenes, I'm sure Tom was trying and and, and Howard, but definitely still trying to make a radio bit out of it. I mean, is it sort of, yeah, hey, man, hey, I have a problem here. Why why are you doing this to me? Or hey, that's part that's part of the deal. Yeah, well, that's uh, you know that's that's very um, thoughtful of you to to, to say that. But hey, look, I took a job in radio, knowing what I was getting into, so. Every part of your life is going to be on there, and it better be true, or else you got no. How it has no use for you if it's contrived or if it's embellished or whatever. So, whatever you're hearing is real, and, and if he senses that it's not real, he won't have you back on. So that's that's why who I think is hilarious, but that's why sometimes you don't hear from Benji for a long time because uh, sometimes Howard uh, and the rest of the group they think that uh, he's doing uh, his shtick, but. Benji is one of the funniest dudes that I've ever met, man. I mean, I don't know how you feel, but um, as you as you tell, I got ADD, so I don't even know if that was the question you asked me. No, it's a good answer. Um, 
Yeah, and I guess just the, do you keep in any contact with Howard at all was the last time you talked to him? I mean, it seems like he's sort of insulated himself lately. Um, tell me a little bit about your just your dealings with him lately at all. Um, last thing I heard from Howard was something really, really nice that he said. He apparently he tuned into see when I do the FM show, I go live on this Twitch. Uh, it's twitch.tv slash WMAP radio. And then I also do face, Facebook Live sometimes. And he went on the air. Somebody told me that he went on the air and he was talking. About, I caught the replay. He said some really nice things about me, that he was watching this uh, one of the shows or something like that. Um, and he said that uh, he's I love Casey. And, uh, you know, so that was that was the last I, I heard from him. I never tried to, you know, reach out. Last time I did was when... I thought he liked a song by Lou Reed that was years ago and <laughs> turned out he did. And then I think that was the last time I, I saw him. I, I don't like to, to bother people. Uh, I have nothing but great things to say about Howard and I'm not looking to promote. I didn't even try and promote this book on, on the show because I wanted to make sure that they, they knew that I'm not, I don't want anything. Most people in showbiz, they want something. But I was just happy to have friendships and be around some good people. That's pretty even cool. Though I, even, even though I, I'm sure I let them down at, at the end because of the, you know, being what I am uh, with, uh, you know, an alcoholic and a drug addict, uh, mental illness, the whole thing. But I think that they know that I tried and I don't think they have any ill will towards me. I definitely don't have it towards them. Yeah. I did. I did have a few other things I wanted to ask you about the show, and then I'm definitely going to dive into the book. Um, sure. A few of the people you worked with. I'm a big. A big uh, argument you had was with Robin on 9/11. Uh, yeah. nine, September 11th happens. The world seems like it's ending, and one of the funniest moments the next day is they. You guys all come back in, which is why the show was so great, especially at this time, because. You know, you guys were on the air the whole time on 9-11. That's how I listened. I wanted to hear what Howard had to say about this stuff. That's that's what I'll always remember about 9-11. But turns out you go work out. I mean, the, the world's crumbling and you go have a – you get that workout in and Robin just lets you have it. Um, it's one of my favorite moments – I mean, I know it seemed like you and Robin were playful, but, boy, she was mean at that point. How, how do she you, loved me, yeah. How would you get yeah, along with I, her? She, 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 she's great at the, by the way, that's that's somebody I do keep in touch. With. I just talked to her last week, uh, you know, just uh, for a, a happy new year. You know that you send it to your friends and stuff like that. So we 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 talked then. Uh, Robin is really such a, an amazing person. She really tries to help people who are in need. Is you probably don't know that, but that's that's something that she's about. And uh, when I, it was a real dark time, she reached out to me and she she helped me. But that day that you're talking about. I didn't understand. Like when Tom came in, he said, if you guys want to leave, you guys can leave. So first of all, I didn't like being up on uh, the 14th floor. And the real reason was because I was a horrible alcoholic and I wanted to leave to go start drinking and betting on horses. So when someone says I can leave work, I was out the door before the, before it even started. It, it didn't matter what was happening. Um, so I went back, went back to my apartment, and I don't know anybody who was who's from New York in your audience, but it wasn't anybody in New York or uh, around the tri-state area or whatever who wasn't affected by it. I didn't know somebody uh, that was that was killed, that was murdered in uh, in the, the Twin Towers, and, and I went back, and then people I saw people that were running in the street. You could see the smoke, uh, and things smoked. Uh, Right, it smoked for like four or five months afterwards. Like I would, I would go run in Central Park, and you would still smell it for like four or five months. I'm not kidding. You. I think it was burning for that long. So, uh, to answer your question, when Tom said I could leave, I was out the door. <laughs> yeah, uh, not to bring a somber note, but yeah. So you didn't work out. You went and drank and watched horses, <laughs> or you did both. What? You didn't work out. You just decided to go have watch horses. Is that is that the new story? I, I no, they were canceled that day. I got back to the to the apartment, and they uh, they, they had canceled uh, the track at Aqueduct, I believe it was at the time. And I had already already got at the time I I uh, was into beer. I drank 
Yeah, so I stopped. And this is so horrible, but I think I've already said it. I don't know, maybe I said it in the book, whatever. But it was the fact that everything was going on. I went back to the island because uh, where my friends were. And nobody was on the road at all. And nobody was looking to pull over anybody who was drinking and driving. So I I was, uh, I had a beer. I was, saying, well, I was a real jerk, man. Uh, really uh, so selfish. I didn't really, I was, I, I, I didn't understand the magnitude of what was happening. I just thought this was a day off and that I could go and get away from work for a couple days. It was a real, uh, See, that's that's the mind of an addict and a uh, an alcoholic. Is it's it's about you and how you can manipulate a situation. I could I could see that. Um, you you talked about really early in this interview about just you would watch the E show and you'd watch Fred with the carts and Robin kind of off to the side and Gary would run in with notes. What was the inner workings of that show like? Because it always seemed like. It was Howard in control, and there was there uh, even when things went wrong, he made it a bit. But it seemed like it really ran really well. I mean, the, Howard always had uh, plenty of questions for his guests that were coming in, uh, even before uh, Benji Jackie was writing jokes and sliding them across. Um, I, I guess it's just it's hard to to imagine just the inner workings of that show. But you got to see all that stuff. Is there anything from those? That, that you saw that you thought, my gosh, I can't believe how organized this is and how it works out so well on the air. Well, uh, the coolest thing, Brad, was that when every Thursday, I don't know how it works now because I haven't been around in a while, but every Thursday we'd have these, or Tuesday, we had these creative meetings after the show, and I got to sit next to Howard uh, on my right, and then Gary was on my left because I was brought in to kind of shadow Gary, and I was kind of his assistant and it was me and Gary would, would book the show and pretty much I was an extension of, of, of Gary and he trusted me and he told me, he said, Case, I'm going to teach everything that I know. And he did. And uh, he was one of the best bosses I've ever had in my life. He was the type of boss. He, he never yelled at me, but he was the type of guy that you wanted, you wanted to please. You wanted to make him happy by doing a, a good job. And you weren't afraid of him yelling at you or anything like that. He would yell at other people, but he knew how to motivate me. And it was just, he knew uh, I would find out a way to get stuff done. So he trusted me with a lot of stuff. So I think we worked very well together. And uh, I'm happy to say that we talked in the past year. And that's that's somebody who, who I really feel like I deceived because he had no idea what was going on. And we were close. I told him about the Golden Palace thing when I won all that money. And, you know, that was people, I hear people say that that was fake. That was not fake. I actually lost that amount of money. Well, I, three, yeah, I was going to say that, uh, again, unfortunately, a great moment on the show at your expense. But uh, if people don't know and are, are listening and, and just enjoying this in this interview, you uh, got on uh, a website and started betting, uh, I guess, playing poker, and you, you got oh, to let, let it ride. Let it ride, okay. And you Which get is to, poker. Right, right. It, and you get to 300, you're up $335,000. And you tell this story on the show, um, and it's, and, and no one knew that the end of the story. So you come in. And Artie knew. You told Artie. And tell us a little bit about what so – you win this money. It's like, oh, my goodness. You, that's a lot of money. What do you do with it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, it took probably about maybe a month, a month and a half, and then it was all gone, $330,000. Because that's, that's how bad depression can be. I just didn't care. Yeah, it's a lot of money, and I, have, I like to think I have respect for money because I've worked hard my whole life. Except when I was lifeguarding, that was not that was not hard. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man. I, I mean, um, just to to not care about having your future just set. You know, at one point, I I went to. I think Gary might have told me to do this. I, I went to a bank to get like a mutual fund or something like that. Oh, I'd be set up for the rest of my life. You know, those dark times probably would have never happened if I would have cared. But I didn't care. So the only thing that would get my mind off me and 
the depression, the whatever, just hating life, was by clicking that that button, gambling, uh, drinking and gambling. And before you know it, it was all gone. And then you thought you had depression. Now you got a reason to be depressed, you know? Man, that's crazy. And I, uh, and again, I laughed hysterically, and it just feels so weird when you look back at it knowing that you, you're having these issues. So you mentioned you got fired by Tom. I mean, so no one knows this is going on, right? I mean, I, how did they find out? How does – I mean, was there a day – I mean, I remember Artie – literally fell asleep eight, nine times and always had this great excuse. And finally, they just said, man, this is not good. He, he couldn't make it through an Ice Cube interview or Ice 50 Cent <laughs> interview. But uh, tell me a little bit about how the end came for you because it just was, oh, man, Casey's gone and they're not talking about him. Yeah, the, the story that you hear all the time was that they found me, uh, the story with the Bible. I don't know if you've heard about that one. I, I think I do. I, I don't mention that in the book. Maybe I don't know. I, I forgot. I I, I I admit a lot in the book. It's kind of like what people haven't heard on the air because I don't talk about anything with a, the book. Is not anything about the show. I think I mentioned how much respect I have for for Howard and how it led to making my mental state uh, worse. But I could have been working at a bank, and the same thing would have happened. It didn't matter. But the end came when I had been in a, a relationship that that failed, and it was with somebody at work, and it shouldn't have been that way. And who was it? There, let's let's get into that. Yeah, I, I probably don't want to say her name just because I don't know what she's got going on. That's fine. I I think I'll figure it out. But it was somebody at work, and I shouldn't have been I shouldn't have been with. And you know, it, it uh, and everybody everybody in the station kind of knew it. Uh, after the first time, because they got suspended the first time. Wait a minute, were you banging Robin? I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just, no, no. I'm just no, you got to talk to Florentine about that. <laughs> I did, and he wouldn't talk about it. Just kidding. yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I no. That's <laughs> that, that's I, funny. That's what, when I actually had to tell Chiasano, that's what he said. He goes, "Are you with Robin? <laughs> what? Why? Why does everybody think I'm with Robin? Uh, no, Robin's just always been a friend. We never had anything like that." Uh, I was kidding. But yeah, um, so anyway, regardless, uh, <laughs> I um, kind of had reached uh, a certain point where there's no going back. Uh, when you get so low and you're really sick and then you start putting alcohol and drugs on top of that, you know, I kept it together for as long as I could. But at the end, uh, I just left work and... Uh, maybe I, I might have said some things that people might have taken the, the wrong way or something, and I didn't. I wasn't showing up for a couple of days, so so they were looking for me. And uh, Tom actually came to my apartment and made the super come in and open open the door, which I thought was kind of I got pissed off about. And then they found me uh, in my crazy knucklehead self uh, with a Bible and it was blood uh, all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. This, I don't know if you've heard the story. No, I have not. Yeah. So, so it, it, it's look, it, this is in the past. This is like 2005. All right. This is a long time ago. I was not a Christian then. Bad example of a Christian now, but I am, uh, I, you know, I've, I've changed a lot about that, but at the time, I, I was looking for someone to blame, so God was the one to blame. So I had desecrated the Bible in my own blood, which is crazy, I know. I was completely crazy. So Tom came in and he saw this. He saw the empty bottles. So they took me into the, uh, the, the loony bin, and I was able to talk my way out of it, so I got out and went in the next day trying to get in, into work, and then Ronnie was there, and he goes, Tom wants to see you. So I go into Tom's office and he says, um, you got to get your stuff. You're now suspended uh, until you go to a substance abuse facility. You go to rehab and you pass these uh, urine tests and HR and everything like that. So, yeah. So, so that's where that went. Man, I had never heard that. 
Yeah. I remember, because, and Howard was so respectful. He never went on the air and talked about it. Yeah. When I was when I was away, people would call and say, "Where's Casey?" Uh, and then the only the only time we ever referenced it was when I came back. I said I was, or they said, uh, or Richard Christie said I was on a vacation. <laughs> I, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Uh-huh. yeah, Richard had some. It was just funny when Richard was doing all those songs. Um, Man, have you seen? Have you heard Sal? And Richard's prank calls, not I not mean, not of late. It's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. I think I did that when they were doing their um, swap shop stuff. Uh, yeah, back in yeah, the- uh, it's like Tradio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tradio. Yeah, was- they got some stuff on YouTube, dude. It's so funny. I, I uh, Richard Christie and Sal are uh, great guys, and so funny, man. I mean, wow. I, I if people haven't seen that, go onto YouTube and type in <laughs> Richard and Sal prank calls. You will laugh your ass off. I guarantee you. Yeah, it's it's amazing that uh, they're they're still kicking around. So you um you you still had issues after you left, but it, you, you sound like you finally kind of got it together. How long have you been um you know good, clean, sober? I don't know if you are clean and sober, but I'm gonna guess you are. Yeah. But, but how well, long I, how long has this been working you know, for you? If you well, I don't drink anymore. It's, it's uh that's just something that was killing me. Uh, that's that's what the that's in the book. Um, I had bled out a couple of times and I was, I got some, you know, some serious health issues now because of the damage that I did. And, uh, that's, that's permanent, but, uh, you know, what? Uh, as far as, uh, the mental illness and all that stuff, um, yeah, I'm never going to be, uh, perfect or I'm always going to be slightly off, but by being positive, by being around positive people, by having Christ in my life, and by doing the right thing by people, um, that's about as best as I can get. So I'm just doing the best I can with what I have for as long as I can. No, I mean it's, it's an interest. It's crazy, interesting story. I, I love it. I'm uh, I'm happy for you. And you, you've talked about the, you've talked about the book a lot. And so I would I did want to ask. So just give me a little bit about what. Um, you know, how, how do you decide, you know, I'm going to sit down. I don't know if you had a ghostwriter, if you actually put pen to paper and, and just tell me a little bit about, um, you know, getting the, getting those thoughts out there on paper. Yeah. So <clears throat> the, the book is called Simply Amazing. And I, 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 you know, I couldn't believe it that it's like, I don't have a big publisher in, in back of me. I mean, I have basically I have no publisher in back of me. To, uh, that's another story. I won't go into it, mm-hmm. but I actually got to number 15 on the Barnes and Noble uh, top 100 bestseller list. Uh, In back of me was Stephen King and Justin Timberlake and uh, Nelson DeMille and uh, Michelle Obama was number one. So I got a screenshot of that and the book did really, really well. So right now I have the the follow-up, which is Simply Amazing Women. But you asked me a question. It was uh, how I got that together. The book is uh, 10 of the most or 11 of the most interesting people that I've interviewed on the air, just people that were amazing with some challenges. For instance, about Werner, I told you, who was the, uh, the concentration camp survivor. Um, Shannon Knight, who's a woman who was given three months to live. She had stage four cancer, and she beat that. Um, there's a, another one about a guy who had no money except a good idea and a hard work ethic. His name is Tom Butts. And... You know, couldn't afford a cheeseburger at the dollar menu, but somehow, through his work ethic and uh, perseverance, now has a multi-million dollar uh, business. Um, it's the story after story of all these amazing people and the challenges that they go through, which are not unlike anything that me or you go through, <laughs> but they come out and it's, it's, it's very inspirational. And what I do is I interview them. It's an interview form. And I write an intro. It's kind of like my travels meeting these people. And then the first chapter is me telling you what I've been up to since I left Howard, which is probably uh, mostly about coming uh, seconds away from death, uh, from living with the condition that I have to now, uh, living with the results of my actions, and just taking it day by day and trying to tell people that I, I don't know them. But there is something amazing in, in everybody. 
and your past doesn't define who you are, but it's what you make it and a positive attitude and doing the right thing goes a real long way. Yeah, you know, my uh, my wife is trying to read a book called uh, How to How to Not Give Two Fs. It's, I think it's <laughs> actually got a different I name. I think that was on the, uh, that might have been on the the list too. Is that a popular book? Yeah, yeah. And I she because she doesn't think I I do, and I, I just sort of float through and get by somehow. But uh, there is there is something to that. Um, and I know this is such a tough question because if someone would ask me this question, I always think about that. Well, if someone asked me this, I don't think I'd want to answer. It, but literally, good interview, by the way, Brad. I appreciate that. I, I enjoy. I really enjoy just kind of talking to, like I said, people that I've listened to or heard. Um, but yeah, and then I always try to, you know, what are you going to do in five years? What are you thinking about? So it's a tough question. I always ask it, and it, I've asked it to Joe Buck and Bob Costas and Ozzie Smith and whoever. But I'll ask you. I mean, can you think of what? Um, it's it's like it sounds like the last five years have been great. What do you see the next five years? Where where am I going in the next five years? Is that the question? Yeah. What do you? I mean, or um, what would you like to do, well, or where do you see your yeah, going? I have, I have some 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 medical challenges that that I have to deal with. If you're here tomorrow. And you did a good job today. You do your best tomorrow. Hopefully another day will come. It's a very vague and mysterious answer, but that's all I can tell you. I don't know. I, I didn't know I had Socrates or, or William Shakespeare on the other line. This is great stuff. <laughs> oh, I do it just, I, or how about just some douchebag? <laughs> no, that's not true. Self-important douchebag. How about that? <laughs> well, it's, we, could call, we could do our own show called Two Douchebags because I'm totally I, – I don't mind being called that. I didn't. No, no, I'm saying I was talking about me. I was no, no, it. no, I'm talking about me. It's me, it's me, it's not you, it's you, it's me. Um, and I didn't ask, I, and I, I do want to know, did, I went through my favorite moments. Did you have a favorite moment on the show? Did you have one that you liked that you, uh, out of all those years being with Howard, did you have a favorite moment yourself? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, in my 20s, I probably would have told you it was getting to hold Pam Anderson's legs while it, she got tickled. But now looking back on it, I'd probably tell you, me and Howard one time were talking about just goofy stuff about pranks we used to pull in, in college and just being immature. And I just remember us both laughing our ass off and everybody was having a, a good time. And that's the stuff I like to remember. That's awesome. And then lastly, just your radio show again. We talked about it very early, so in case people have uh, kind of uh, – want to hear about it one more time uh just tell everybody how how you can uh, listen to you and, and what you're up to and, and how we can uh hear your voice because it sounds like once again that like i said you're you're kind of in a good spot and i think it'd be fun to listen to you again well thanks man uh so wmapradio.com i'm on 24 7 and it's all interviews it's all talk all day and then seven uh eastern time i start my fm syndicated program which goes across the country on fm radio and uh, that's just under my name if you're in florida uh, 941 the bud in florida or if you're in new york 1039 li news radio and i'm in the studio now so let's see what's playing who are you m-a-p world's most amazing people yeah so this is a radio it looks like a boring uh intro news radio. that's why i keep the sound out i can't stand here. I was going to say, can we, maybe we could hear a little Blues Islanders play by play there if we were uh, waiting just a little bit longer. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's on the feed right here. I can, I can show you that. Uh, the other thing we're going to keep it close. Oh, what time is it? Oh, it's 6.51. So, yeah, it's not on. It's not on. So. Not on yet, but. That's, that's Frank McKay. He's good. He's, he's, uh, he's right after Hannity. Goes Hannity, Frank McKay, then me. It's a good lineup. Yeah, but I don't know anything about politics. <laughs> I don't think anyone does. I think you just take one side and then you just scream a lot. <laughs> that's yeah. what you do yeah well i Makes like sense. i said i thoroughly enjoyed this and i i'm i'm gonna keep your number and we're gonna catch up in maybe a year and see how things are going i obviously have a few more memories i'd like to share but we've gone we've gone long enough i think but i, I really enjoyed this i hope you did too sir this was real fun yeah well, brad you know i i gotta tell you i i have to uh, compliment you a lot of interviewers will ask a question and then I sometimes uh, have the problem of doing the same thing is where, you know, you'll interrupt the person and you want to say something, or, but you know what? You really uh, have a, a great command of your show and how you let people kind of, you're really interested in the person's story. 
Basically, that's what it feels like is someone who's being interviewed by you. I don't know if you've heard that before. Yeah, let me talk about myself for a second, Casey, if you don't mind. (laughs) Well, actually, let's not talk about me anymore. What do you think about me? (laughs) Yeah, no, No, but I, 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 so I, I've been doing interviews for about twenty years now professionally, and I was terrible at them at the beginning, but. I've always – my one thing if I ever taught kids is listen to what people are saying because if you're just thinking about your next question, you know, Casey might just say, you know what, tomorrow I'm actually going back on the Howard Stern Show as a, as a new cast member. And if I'm looking at my notes and just going, oh, so talk about uh, Robin, you know, I, I'd miss it. So it's my, – my one thing that I, I do is absolutely let the person talk but to listen. I mean that's my, my little – for people listening here if they care, that's that's my – no, teaching it's, lesson it's, for the it's day. great advice and that, that's that's a great way i mean I'm, a lot of people don't do that and uh, even professionals should be aware of that because a lot of us do that we're always we're thinking about our next question or where we're going to go from here but you sit back and you are interested in the person it comes across and i'm sure it comes across to your audience too i i hope it does and uh, there are listeners so i appreciate the listeners but that's going to do it for here's the pitch i think casey armstrong We'll be keeping in touch with him. And, uh, again, go check out Masses Restaurants, stlmasses.com, five locations in St. Louis. That's going to do it for Here's the Pitch. Once again, thanks to Casey, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Brad.